Hello well wishers and welcome to my channel Aspiring Minds. In today's video, we are going to discuss Rachel Carson's work called Obligation to Endure. So grab your virtual seats and let's begin. In this video, I am going to discuss the background and context of Obligation to Endure followed by a detailed textual discussion along with a summary of what it all includes and at the end there is going to be a thematic discussion as well Rachel Carson also known as Rachel Louis Carson was an American marine biologist writer and conservationist She was born in Springfield Pennsylvania and passing away in Silver Spring Maryland Carson had a distinguished educational background where she completed her bachelor's and master of arts she further studied at the marine biological laboratory in massachusetts her career included roles at the university of maryland the us bureau of fisheries and john hopkins university she was a member of various prestigious organizations and received numerous awards including the national book award for her work the sea around us Her most influential work is Silent Spring which was published in 1962 and brought widespread attention to the dangers of pesticides and led to significant environmental reforms and changes. To tell you about the background of this work, The Obligation to Endure is a chapter from her groundbreaking book called Silent Spring written in the early 1960s. This chapter addresses the detrimental impact of synthetic chemicals particularly pesticides on the environment during this period the use of these chemicals was increasing with very little consideration for the long term effects on the ecosystems and the human health carson's work was instrumental in generating awareness and launching the modern environmental movement alongside promoting legislative as well as regulatory changes regarding pesticide use to tell you about the central message of the obligation to endure it is a warning about the irreversible damage caused by the widespread use of synthetic chemicals carson argues that humanity's unchecked and reckless use of pesticides and other pollutants was causing catastrophic harm to the environment and all living beings she calls for greater awareness regulation and a shift towards more sustainable and environmentally friendly practices that we need to take for a better understanding of obligation to endure these are the six parts in which i have divided them you are going to see textual references from each of the six parts and a detailed explanation which will follow let us now move on to a detailed summary of this particular work of art and i am going to be having the quotes from the relevant parts on your screens which will help you to get a simultaneous textual support in what i am saying the first quote is that the history of life on earth has been a history of interaction between living things and their surroundings only within the moment of time represented by the present century has one species man acquired significant power to alter the nature of his world during this past quarter century this power has not only increased to one of disturbing magnitude but it has changed in character so in the first part which i have titled as an introduction to the environmental impact we see that the essay begins by highlighting the history of life on earth as an interaction between living organisms and their surroundings she notes that only recently with the advent of human technological advancements has life significantly changed and has also brought about a change in the environment this alteration or change primarily has caused pollution which has now reached a critical and dangerous stage she talks about pollution and its irreversible effects 
द मोस्ट अलार्मिंग ऑफ ऑल मैं असोल्ट अपॉन द इन्वायरमेंट इज द कंटेमिनेशन ऑफ एयर अर्थ रिवर्स एंड सी विथ डेंजरस एंड इवन लीथल मटीरियल लीथल मीन्स वेरी वेरी हार्मफुल एंड पॉइजनस कंटेमिनेट मीन्स टू पल्यूट द एयर टू डर्टी द एयर नेक्स्ट शी सेज दैट दिस पल्यूशन इज फॉर द मोस्ट पार्ट इ रिकवरेबल दैट इज यू कैन नॉट ब्रिंग अबाउट अ चेंज द चेन ऑफ ईवल it initiates or it brings about is not only in the world that must support life but in the living tissues that is even in the living tissues of our bodies there is going to be the harmful effects of pollution absorbed right so we see over here that carson describes the alarming increase in environmental contamination particularly from chemicals and radiation these pollutants are not only widespread but they also persist or stay in the environment they do not you know vanish away from the environment and because they stay in the environment it is leading to irreversible changes and harm to all forms of life imagine when the bombing of hiroshima and nagasaki happened in japan till today you can find radiation effects in human beings in terms of deformities and other problems in their biological makeup so that is why she is particularly talking about how if pollution is caused and released into the environment the effects go on forever and it only multiplies with time next she talks about synthetic chemicals and their dangers she says that the chemicals to which life is asked to make its adjustment are no longer merely the calcium and silica and copper and all the rest of the minerals washed out of the rocks and carried in rivers to the sea they are synthetic creations of man's inventive mind brewed in his laboratories they are not occurring naturally in nature but because they have been made in laboratories they are even more harmful look at the next quote to adjust to these chemicals would require time on the scale that is nature's it would require not merely the years of a man's life but the life of generations that is how long it will take for human beings to understand the harmful effects of these chemicals and learn about coping up with them and this is going to take time which will be spreading across generations the next thing that she's saying is that the new chemicals come from our laboratories in an endless stream that is there is no limit and it is causing even more danger she elaborates basically over here about the dangers of synthetic chemicals which are not naturally occurring in nature the rapid introduction of these chemicals especially pesticides forces living organisms to adapt to an unnatural pace often resulting in harmful consequences because human beings over the past generations have also not been exposed to such chemicals and now there is added pressure on all living creatures to adjust to these new chemicals which are being produced and used in laboratories and in the world at large next she talks about the pesticides and the ecological imbalance she says that these sprays dusts and aerosols are now applied almost universally to farms gardens forests and homes non selective chemicals that have the power to kill every insect the good and the bad this has happened because insects in a triumphant vindication of darwin's principle of the survival of the fittest have evolved super races who are immune to particular insecticide use hence a deadlier one has always has to be developed and because they are developing you will see if you are spraying hit and other such uh, you know sprays in your homes to kill these insects which are there in your homes you will see that after a point it stops having effect even the all out and other such brands which we use for killing of mosquitoes they have become immune to that so with time what's happening new new chemicals of this sort are being invented and used and because of that extensive use of pesticides it is killing not just the 
harmful species but even the beneficial ones this disruption this disturbance of the natural balance can lead to greater problems like the development of pesticide resistant insects and the resurgence of pest populations that is new ways and new species can evolve which could be more dangerous we know that covid was a laboratory invented virus that is one claim right and there are other claims that it naturally occurred from bats there is still no concrete evidence available for that yes but basically we need to learn to control the pesticide use is what she is saying what are the broader implications of this she says along with the possibility of extinction of mankind by nuclear war the central problem of our age has therefore become the contamination of man's total environment with such substances of incredible potential for harm substances that accumulate in the tissues of plants and animals and even penetrate the germ cells to shatter or alter the very material of heredity that is you know the future generations depend on the current genes and all of this is getting hampered next she says that we may easily be doing so now by in advertence for many chem- chemicals like radiation bring about gene mutations all this has been risked for what future historians may well be amazed by a distorted sense of proportion so this is very true the very fact that there are so many women every other woman for that matter suffers from certain problems like pcos pcod and other such problems related to childbirth a major cause discussed in many of the podcasts which i also see are the fact that we are having adulterated food it is extremely full of harsh chemicals right so this is not just for the case of women but even men are getting affected so basically she is warning about the broader implications of chemical pollution include including genetic mutations and the potential harm it may cause to future generations so we see how she is highlighting the paradox of using dangerous methods to control pests because in order to control pests ultimately we are risking the health and survival of humanity itself and she's trying to bring a little bit of sarcasm here saying that it will be a good content for research for the future historians about how they will be able to study about gene mutations of human beings but imagine on a serious note what are the potential dangers of this Finally you will see towards the end there is a call for action she says i'm saying rather that control must be geared to realities not to mythical situations and that the methods employed must be such that they do not destroy us along with the insects much of the necessary knowledge is now available but we do not use it she saying that if people are inventing new kinds of chemicals and substances they are doing it with the available knowledge they should do it in such a way that it is simultaneously human friendly she is calling for a responsible action urging that pest control methods should be based on the reality and sustainability rather than unchecked chemical use she emphasizes the need for ecological understanding and sustainable practices to prevent for the environmental as well as human degradation so the four major takeaways of this particular chapter could be man versus nature the irreversible environmental damage environmental awareness which is necessary as well as creating ecological interdependence the first thing that she talks about is the human impact on nature She explores how human activities particularly industrial and agricultural practices have dramatically changed and altered the natural environment this theme highlights the deep and often negative impact that human beings have on the environment and the planet at large secondly she also talks about the irreversibility of environmental damage the 
hole in the ozone layer is increasing day by day that is one example if i give you from the present scenario so here too she emphasizes that much of the damage is caused by pollution especially from synthetic chemicals which is irreversible it cannot be changed so it serves as a stark warning about the long term consequences of the current practices here she also points out the necessity for greater awareness and proactive measures to protect the environment she advocates for informed decision making and stricter regulations to prevent further harm because she says that interconnectedness and interdependence of all living beings on the environment is there so this essay illustrates how disrupting or causing an imbalance in one part of the ecosystem can have far reaching and dangerous effects on the environment at large and she gives us a very good example she says if human beings can use knowledge to create new chemicals they can also find out ways with that same knowledge to create chemicals which are more environment friendly so that we are not causing such dangerous levels of harm so through this detailed analysis i hope i have been able to point out and clear out what this chapter includes overall So that's it from this video. I hope you liked it. Do hit the like button. Subscribe to my channel for more such future updates. Thank you for watching. Bye.